Welcome to the NBA Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I'm your host, Norman Sanzo, and joining me today is Silver Quill. This is the end, my January friend. Wait, sorry, wrong one. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. And also joining us today is Tatera. I lost count. Count on what? I lost count on how many episodes and seasons it's been. Oh, it's overall season. Uh, we've been doing this for, what, 222 episodes. Hmm. Well, I know I wasn't, I wasn't in part of it. It's all okay. You're part of it. Yes, I am officially now part of it. <laughs> yeah, you, you were in the background. <laughs> but anywho, uh, in today's uh, episode, we are going to talk about season nine as a whole, uh, what we think, and all that stuff. So before we start, how how do we do this? Before I I, I have problems remembering. Yeah, because usually you go first impressions are in order. <laughs> Yeah, but true, this is yeah. the whole season we're going to be talking about. Uh, yeah, true, true. So you know what? Um, let's go this way. What's your feeling about season nine? And we'll we'll go from there. Silva, an enjoyable season and a fun send off to the show. There are things I wish could have been done in a stronger way, especially uh, regarding the f- the final episodes for characters like Applejack. Uh, I'll rant on that a little bit later. <laughs> There's also the interesting topic of the story flow, which, again, we'll get into. But it'll be fun to talk about how this stacks up against the previous seasons. But all in all, I, I really enjoyed season nine, just as I've enjoyed this show and continue to do so. The nice thing about when you close the book is you can then turn it over and open the cover again. <laughs> true, that. true that, true that. And Tara? I really enjoyed this season as well. There was a couple of episodes I didn't really enjoy, and some made me question a couple of things. But most of the episodes I did enjoy, and I enjoyed season nine as a whole. All right, all right. And as for me, season nine was a lot of fun. It had some questionable episodes here and there, but it felt like uh, this season was the season where we need to wrap everything up so everything can have a conclusion. Some episode worked, some episode didn't, but overall it was an okay episode. So let's start off with the intro. Uh, The beginning of the episode where uh, the villain, uh, Grogar, is introduced to us where he collects all of the villains to invade or to threaten Equestria. How how was that? Like how how was the villain for this season? He was a lie, a vicious lie. I feel so used. I mean, Grogar. We were looking forward to seeing him do the deeds, be the evil muahaha. And I yeah, it is disappointing that I wouldn't we wouldn't get to see the Grogar and all his power on display. Well, his power was on display, but expressed through the triad rather than his own style. And I think that's what people were really looking forward to, his own style of villainy. But as the series, as the season progressed, it really became clear this was about the triad, the three villains working together. So while Discord's reveal was very startling, for me at least, uh, I thought, yeah, I get why they did it. I still would have liked to see Twilight face an evil as powerful as the legend she's already built up on her own. Maybe to find out Gusty the Great was really just a scared pony doing her best. And Tara? I was also upset about uh, the whole thing being alive with Grogar because I never knew about Grogar because I just got into My Old Pony through this generation. So I didn't really know much of him back then. But once I saw him, I'm like, oh, who's Grogar? And then I did a bunch of research and it's like, oh, okay. So he's an old character coming to this generation. And I was kind of looking forward to a big battle because this guy was like the father of monsters and that he created every single evil creature and stuff. And I, and I was hoping to see Twilight face them along with the, the triad. And then maybe, you know, say they're about to lose and then Gusty comes out of the... I don't know where she came from, but she comes and saves them, and they defeat her together. But instead, it was just all a lie, and it broke my heart. Yeah, I, I get what you mean. Like with the villains in this one, the initial setup was awesome. We we got back all of the legends, like all, all of the 
uh, what you will call this uh, big, uh, big, big bads like uh, T-Rex, uh, Chrysalis, Sombra, who we thought was dead, came back, and also Cozy Glow. You know, Sombra was dispelled <laughs> through an explosion. <laughs> oh yes, that, that one. Yeah. So we got four of the big bads, and that was kind of a huge setup. Like we would really love to see Sombra in. A, a more more of a role where he get to speak lines other than crystals and whatnot or ponies, and we we did get that, but only for two episodes, which is kind of meh. I, I'm sure. Oh man, th- this is also on top of the comic where oh uh, he's redeemed, he's a good guy now. All his adventure with his girlfriend to look for parts of a pony that was shattered, blah, 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 blah. Uh, (laughs) Non-canon. Yes, I'm afraid that did wipe out uh, Siege of the Crystal Empire. And that's too bad, because I liked Sombra's uh, Fiendship is Magic origin. Yeah, it's a sympathetic... (laughs) Uh, He was a sympathetical character. Wait, Sombra used to be nice? Yeah. He was... Out of place, but yeah, he was trying to be kind. And his redemption in the comics portrayed him as a much more conflicted character. True, true. And as per usual, canon A uh, supersedes canon B. So that comic is non-canon. Which is kind of sad because Comic Sombra was really awesome. Like he had potential. He, He was going places, yo. Even the changelings were scared of him. Yeah, yeah. Like, Chrysalis didn't want any part of him. But in in this series, like, oh, God, yeah. So, villains aside, what do you think of... I'm not going to go for the main character. Main character's too obvious. The side characters, what do you think of the the others? Like, Trixie and... Sorry, not Trixie. Um, Starlight and her group. Well, they mostly... Uh, I think they stole the... Their big focus was, um, dang it, what's the what's the title? Uh, student Council. Was that was sort of their coup de grace. A so big then. old adventure running through the uh, Everfree Forest trying to outrun Cockatrice continuity. There's more, right? Be- be beyond that? Like, I, I felt like there's more. Well, I mean, the, the Sunburst had a minor role in uh, Trivial Pursuit. But that really wasn't about him or his placement in it. Oh, yes, and then there was a matter of, uh, no, no, a horseshoe in. Which, honestly, I would, I'd sooner take student counsel, as Trixie is much funnier and more endearing when she's frustrated or denied. When she's entitled, she's just spoiled and frustrating. <laughs> yeah. I'm more for student counsel than horseshoe in by any day. Oh, all right. But in all honesty, like, I... I f- hmm. I felt like My Little Pony Friendship is Magic could have gone like how how do I put this? Personally I felt like the right move to do was shift focus to Starlight. Like after season what was it six? Going to seven? Mm-hmm. Like they should have shifted. We all remember how Starlight saved everyone from Chrysalis and uh, we got the new changelings, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I think that was season six. Yeah, six going to seven, something like that. So I felt like season six was the season where we shift focus to Starlight. So we get to see from her point of view how she quote unquote redeem herself, uh, quote unquote uh, learns the lesson that need to be learned from a different point of view. But nah, we 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 stuck with Twilight and her gang. And it felt like most of the seasons were just repeats of older episodes. Because think about it. Uh, you, you mentioned, Silver, that each time when the students try to uh, shine, the teachers or the professors need to kind of be dumb or kind to be uh, do something that's stupidly out of character. Or flawed. I mean, sometimes it's, it is just their natural flaw. The flaw. Mm, true, but imagine if it was Starlet and her gang. Like, 
they don't really know. So if they were to make mistakes, it was normal. Well, here's the thing. I think the real mistake, people were all, people were mad about the idea of Starlight taking over the show. So let's just put that out there. I'm not sure making putting the focus on her would be as uh, as good a solution as we you might hope, Norman. Yeah, I, I heard that from you too. And upon hind, in hindsight, that could have been bad. But in all honesty, it would have been better in terms of story. But uh, we, we did what? get her story in the show. But I felt like it was the proper progression. Well, I know some people were also a bit upset because when, like, you got Sunset Shimmer in Equestria Girls and she's basically being, uh, Twilight's being Sunset's teacher, but then Starlight comes in and people were like, why can't Sunset just go back to Equestria and Twilight can teach her? Why does it have to be this character? I, I know how you feel, bro, because Sunset is my uh, favorite Equestria Girls character, but it's one of those things where Hasbro splits them apart for a good reason because Equestria Girls is selling this bunch of toys while My Little Pony Friendship is Magic is selling this kind of toys. So we're not going to cross-pollinate that much. Even uh, what in the previous review that we did with the Forgotten Memories, you, Silver, you mentioned that them crossing paths again felt a betrayal of... What was it again? Well... I wouldn't call it a betrayal, but it did feel like they were still relying on the show, My Little Pony, to make Equestria Girls work when it seemed to have graduated from that. The introduction of students, the introduction of Starlight, the, uh, the addition of other more recurring characters. We've gone way past the days of background ponies that the fans flesh out to now recurring supporting characters. The main six never really got to be teachers. The and they never got to eat. the problem of the show. And I've seen this happen in a lot of shows is that you introduce a new character, but you don't ask, how does this change the dynamic for the established characters? What do they do differently? What do they do? They hang out together. Do they change their, their rhythm to integrate this new addition to their lives? We don't get that. And that's, I think that's part of why Starlight always felt more like she was taking from the main six rather than, adding to the show because the because she needed to go on adventures with the main six and to maybe have a met mission with one member of the main six and just to wonder wow is this how you always do it i feel so out of place just give her a chance to wrestle with her place in this group but by and large it was okay twilight's friends are over here starlight's friends are over here and rarely do the two interact True, true, but hmm, like we we did get a map episode starring Starlight. It's what Starlight and Sunburst. So that's something, but but it's uh, not them working with other po any pony outside of Starlight's uh, cavalcade of friends. Uh, true that, true that. I mean, yeah. uh, but here's the thing: like, would it be a good idea for Starlight to work with the main one of the main six? Answer is yes. Yes. But you know what? Here, here's the story idea. Uh, trouble happened and the map calls for Starlight and Spike. So that is a combination that's out there. And since it's Spike, um, fans of the show are not going to scream and moan. Spike fans will, but general fans, they're okay with it. Well, Spike deserves a better map mission than the last one he got. Oh, uh, yeah, that's true. That was like the only map mission he got, too, which was kind of sad. Was it? Yeah. Yep. Not including the comics, by the way. Well, I don't think the comics ever gave him a map mission. Did they not? Because... Nope. What was it? I don't think the comics... Sorry? The comics never did a map mission. Oh, what, what about Luna and Spike? What was that one? That was when Luna invited him to uh, go to Philadelphia. Ah, oh, yeah. So that wasn't a map mission. That was Luna going about her royal business. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. But still, some some things like that with Sun, sorry, um, Starlight and one of the main six or something like that would, would have worked, would have worked. 
they they really need to write it down, right? But still, I I believe it could work. And Tara, what about you? What what do you think of uh, Starlet and her group of friends? I mean, you guys just basically took all the words out of my mouth. I can't really say much because I agree with all of you. All right. Aha, we foiled you uh, again. All right. So moving on to the next set of characters, the student six or the young six, however you want to call them. Uh, what what do you think? Like personally, for me, again, I would have thought that season nine would be their season. Uh, them dealing with the fame of saving Equestria, them dealing with uh, stuff like just uh, like them just doing stuff like what the main six do, like shift focus to them instead. Because what the episode uprooted seems like the episode for them, but nope, 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 we're not getting that. If you think about it, throughout the whole season of season nine, there's only like Four episodes that involve the young sex. Yeah, uh, well, it was uprooted. This one. Uh, yeah, uprooted. Uh, she's all yak when Yona's trying to impress Sandbar, and um, th- this one didn't involve all of them, but it involved Smolder with uh, Sweet and Smoky. Sweet Smoky, uh, Dragon Drop. What was that another one too? No, Dragon Drop didn't really involve them. Uh, okay. Cameo. Yeah. And the fourth one would be two, four, six, great. Oh yeah. That oh, one. and and maybe student council. Oh yeah, Even and though... student council, but they don't make much of an impact there. True. No, in fact, in fact, I felt student council was frustrating because, uh, Silverstream, her big moment was back in uh, what lies beneath, where she confronts her memory of the Storm King. That's it. She never really got. Uh, another time to shine and as a result uh, even in an episode that's supposed to heavily revolve around her as a motivating factor she hardly appears in it and I gotta say that yo, I'm Yona'd out <laughs> at this point but Yona didn't appear that much like she was in what two episodes at least in season 9 oh but can okay two in season 9 but also uh, well our experience in the comics, Yona is often uh, the biggest um, factor in the comics, the big motivator. In Uprooted, she's the one to talk sense into everyone. Uh, with Rock Hoof and A Hard Place, she's the one who sort of convinces him not to petrify himself. Yona, maybe because she gives the biggest reactions, she is often the mm, prime motivator or... She's the emotional heart, and as a result, she's often the most prominent. I wish that if we gotten more of the student six, they could have shared the uh, wealth, so to speak. Yeah, and that's where I always say that shifting focus would have done wonders for the others because what um, from from what season eight season eight shows a shift of character like we start off with the establishment of the school uh, we start off with the students running away then uh, we ended up with well not really but we ended up with the students quote-unquote saving the world but it, it felt like if they shifted to the student six at least that would have make them more viable more of a talking point or of more focus well, such was not to be. Yeah, yep. yeah. and that, that, that's, okay. that's frustrating because, to me, <laughs> shifting focus from what uh, shifting focus from uh, Starlight and her gang would have done wonders. Then uh, later on, shifting focus to the students would have done wonders. But no, 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 we, we didn't get that much. Like we we only got what uh, a few cameos here and there, and I I really wanted to see um, the other student uh, progress, at least to tell their side of the story and whatnot. You just want to see Gallus take a... He meets shining armor and suddenly wants to become a guard. That guy is so cool! <laughs> at least something, right? I mean, uh, have a story where Gallus meets up with uh, shining armor or uh, hangs out with... Uh, not Flash. Uh, who's the other Flash? Yeah. Who's the other Flash? Flash. Oh, Flash Magnus. Flash. Yeah. 
So hang out with him, hear stories or something like that. You could integrate the comic. Uh, remember the uh, history of uh, Griffinstone where uh, the Griffins uh, kind of praise Flash for saving them? Yes. At least uh, if you have that, uh, like Gallus meets with a legendary hero from the past and like he's so odd, so uh, enamored by him that he's inspired to join uh, the Royal Guard. I mean, at least that would give him a motivation to move on or at least develop. Well, as it is, like I say, I, I don't know about shifting the focus completely away from the main six. People are, people were upset when that they speculated that would happen. Goodness knows they'd go bonkers if it actually happened. But what's wrong? Like, okay, uh, I, I guess uh, before I carry on with this train of thought, uh, anything more to add with the student six? Nope. Sandbar, I think, really had his shining moments this season rather than last. Ah, uh, yes, with Yona. Uh, with oh, Yona. Yeah. And just, it, Sandbar got game, let's just say it. Yes. <laughs> like, some people think that Sandbar might have not gotten the, <laughs> may, may have gotten the bad end of the stick, but nah, man, y y Yona seems awesome. Y Yona's great. Unfortunately, Gallus had nothing to do this season other than, you know, the group activity. And that's unfortunate. As he was Harswar what was it, the Harswarming Club? Something like that, yeah. He became the instant darling because he was so alone. And people gravitate towards that. They empathize with it. It's unfortunate that we couldn't really uh learn more about him. I guess his shining moment was actually just as a witness to Trixie taking on Grandpa Gruff. But still, but still. Um, so, is there any, any more to add? So? Not for the students. All right. And with that, what's wrong with shifting uh, points of view? Because, like I mentioned before, it would be a great... Or I, I personally would like the shift, but you mentioned that people would not like it. So, do share. Okay. I'll actually uh, rely on past experience with other cartoons. Because that's important. Big trend in the 80s was to introduce a new character as they are the new toy. And suddenly, that was it for the old guard. The most extreme example is Transformers, where they kill old characters. But it can also be more subtle. Uh, one example being the cartoon Silverhawks. They introduced uh, a new Silverhawk to the team several times over. And once that happened, it was just that that set of Silverhawks going on adventures. The old guard, the ones who started the series, didn't appear pretty much at all. Or if they did, it was just a brief cameo to support. You st suddenly, they just stopped. And you're always left wondering, well, wait, what are the others up to? What, what happened to the characters for whom I tune into this show? Kids form a connection with these characters because they embody an ideal or they appeal to something uh, that is very uniquely human. They care about the outcome. So when suddenly a, a character just stops being relevant, stops having any focus, you just like, what are you, what happened? Why, why have you turned this off? I was curious about them. And then it's very natural to resent the new as you feel like it's stolen the connection you had. Good Lord, Rodimus Prime. <laughs> well, probably the most hated Transformers character, I'd argue even more than uh, Wheelie or anything by Michael Bay. Oh, yeah. Because to a lot of people, he got Optimus killed. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember that. And I remember hearing uh, kids who went to the cinema to watch Transformers the movie, they went out bawling. <laughs> they went out bawling. One kid actually sealed himself in his family's bathroom for two days. Wow. He was that depressed. Yeah, I mean, Prime was... Oh, sorry, Optimus Prime was a hero. Like, uh, his charisma was top rank. Like, he was awesome. And having the show kill him off like a punk was not great. Oh, no, I got to protest. They did not kill him like a punk. He went out like a badass. Yeah, but <laughs> here's the thing. He died. 
uh, the matrix of leadership shifted to Rodimus. Not even the other guy. Who who was it again? The, uh, Bumblebee? No, the white and blue trailer thingy. Ultra Magnus? Yeah, not even him. He would have made a better oh. leader. Well, he was for a time, but then he done got blown up and he was brought back to life, which makes no bloody sense. Why are we talking about Transformers in a My Little Pony retrospective? Hasbro. Uh, because crossover, Transformers and My Little Pony. Yeah. That's coming. That's coming. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boys. But yeah, I mean, okay, uh, that's the uh, other extreme of it. But I don't know. I, I feel like if done right, it could have gone better. Okay, maybe a split of... Seventy thirty, that would have worked, right? You know, unfortunately, with fans, you can't argue hard math because one, they'll probably get bored and walk away. But two, it's hard to know how people would react. Honestly, all you need is to match up a student with a teacher and really show the teacher being a guide. It's the one thing the the main six never got to be, even in a season where they're teachers. And that's probably the biggest flaw of the of the past two seasons. But I'd argue, even when Starlight hit the scene, the main six never got to step up into the teaching role. Yeah, that, that's the thing. Where, okay, with Starlight, she's a grown adult. She knows what to do. Okay, maybe a bit of guidance, true. But with Starlight, you, you don't see the main six guiding her in terms of morale. We, we do see a bit of it where they try to teach Starlight that magic is not the end all be all but most of the time I feel like she learned stuff on her own well personally I would have loved uh, if Starlight had taken part in Winter Wrap Up look at what that did for Twilight Winter Wrap Up Winter Wrap Up tell me you remember that episode otherwise I'll be very sad oh, of yeah, course that, I remember that, it that was a good one that was a good one but nah, it's, it's, like, like I mentioned before, it's one of those things where I feel like a 70-30 split would have done wonders. But um, fans are fickle. Fans are fickle. Say that one more time and the fans will appear before you. Say, we're not fickle, you just suck. <laughs> well, anywho, Silver, what would you like to talk about now? I'd like to talk about a, a discussion I had with Voice of Reason on a live stream on Friday. Someone asked the question, which overall story did you, in story, uh, season long arc did you enjoy more? Season four with the introduction of the Rainbow Keys mm. or season nine? Voice was a fan of season nine because he felt like the events rolled together. Sombra destroys the Tree of Harmony, so the students six have to uh, rebrand it. Twilight is declared to be the future ruler of Equestria, so she's got to. Uh, learn to delegate and she's got to learn to get over her uh, perfectionism and so on and so forth and the royal sisters have to decide what they want to do you know now that they're not going to be the governing body anymore so we get a preview of what they might do in their free time it all flowed together under this uh, concept this banner but I argued for season four because with each key you felt like you were getting closer to a, a rising conflict there was something big was happening and this was the main six getting ready in season nine shining armor got ready with a bunch of defenses only one of which actually worked <laughs> yes i'm a little bitter <laughs> but basically the main six went through season nine oblivious to the threat until the very end we knew dramatic irony is so difficult, but in season four, each of them had a moment of weakness, doubt, realization, growth, and correction. And as a result, it felt like they were, when they realized what needed to be done, when Twilight had her moment of, of, of clarity, it felt like a culmination. So I'd argue that season four was more about rising tension, whereas season nine was about f story flow. That was a good point, actually. And so they appeal. Both have their strengths. Both have enjoyment. Voice and I, you know, we just enjoyed different aspects. All right. All right. True, 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 true. 
And well, I mean, it's not like he was being the voice of reason or anything. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, your favorite season was okay. Uh, your favorite season in terms of uh, overarching story was season four. Tara, what about you? I kind of have to go with C- Silver and season four because while season nine was pretty great, I also I like season four because. When I first introduced the key, I was very curious, like, ooh, what's this key? Uh, what's this box? What's going to be inside? Where will they get the key? And then once we got our first key episode, I was like, oh, okay, so that's how it's going to be. And then after the first key episode, I was always wondering, ooh, when's the next one going to be the key episode? Is it this one? And then once it gets to the end, it's like, oh, okay, that's not a key episode. And then, you know, it's building up the suspense until it gets to the moment where it's like, oh, finally, we get to see the key open. I mean, the chest open. <laughs> The only downside I have with season four is that some episodes, like, say, the bats one, where Fluttershy turns into an actual bat, and then at the ending, you see the fangs growing back, but it's never addressed again. <laughs> Although briefly mentioned in the Scare Master, but never fully tackled. I mean, Rarity, like, vampire fruit bat? Eh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. And, well, uh, as for me... I like season five. The map mission introduction? Yes, the cutie map. Because the map was what? Uh, the, the map was there to establish a reason for the main six to travel across Equestria. And if I'm not mistaken, uh, season four had the map, right? No, that Twilight still had her library. It done got blowed up. Yeah, Twilight was the... just getting used to being a princess. Or, or, or side skirting being a princess. I mean, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Nothing happened there. Mm-hmm. That's why I, I kind of laugh in a Point of No Return, where Twilight's like, "Ponies recognize me everywhere I go." <laughs> I think back to Twilight in New York, and it's like, "Yeah, no, no, they they really don't." <laughs> but but for me, um, season five because of the map, because the map gave the ponies a reason to travel all over Equestria, and we get to see. Uh, more well, lore, more development in world, and the map lasted for a long while. Like it lasted till season what? Uh, eight was it or seven? Season eight. Yeah. So the kid. the sounds of silence was the last map mission, and of course, it starred my two favorite ponies, for which I'm glad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's one of those cases where the map kind of serve its purpose it, it 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 has a long uh story for to behind it and season 5 in all honesty had the uh threat of uh starlight like starlight has is <laughs> i i'm i'm guessing you won't agree with me but starlight has always been in the background planning plotting finding the right time to pounce on uh, Twilight, looking for her weaknesses and whatnot. And overall, S- Starlight here was the only what villain to best Twilight in terms of raw power. The only reason she lost was because there was nothing to gain. Like, they could do this ping pong match forever and no one would win. Also, pounce on Twilight. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> and uh, you you mentioned something about what ifs in season nine. Like season five here is a whole what if. What if the changelings were uh, to win? What if Nightmare Moon were to succeed? What if the CMC, sorry, what if the main six or Rainbow Dash didn't perform her Sonic Rain Boom. What would happen? And what, 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 what? So to me, I like season five for its overarching story. Also, for just mentioning favorite seasons, I season two will always be my most popular. Oh, yeah. I mean, for seasons, season two for me because that is the season where a whole lot of things change for me personally. Oh, that's the thing. A lot has changed over the course of the show. I... All that's gone on. But the one thing that doesn't change is that we are still friends. <laughs> True that. There we True go. True that. And Tara, um, what would you like to talk about? 
Oh, I think to talk about season nine in general because while season nine was great, I feel like it wasn't really focused on the main six. It was mostly about all about the side characters, like except the opening and the ending, because most of it involved around the se- the student six, and Spike had his moment with Sparkle seven, and then there was Quibble Pants trying to get to spend time with, uh, I guess you could say, his girlfriend and his her daughter. Uh, like basically it was all about the side characters i was more focused on them instead of the main six because the main six learned a lot they're just trying to get used to um ruling over a question you got their moments where they're dictating and stuff but like i said mostly it's around the, the side characters i i see what you mean and my rebuttal for it is that since season nine is going to be the last season they need to close chapters in certain characters uh, a good example would be Daring Doubt. In that episode, we get Daring Do, Arizotel, and also Dr. Cavalleron. And in that episode, uh, they fought and they give a reason to why Arizotel is mean to Daring Do. And that's because he's a guardian and he has to take care of the items because Arizotel and Daring Do keep stealing them and whatnot. So that's why he's a bit aggro with them. And we, we get to see that Daring Do and Caballeron work together to write a book. And yeah, I mean, for me personally, I feel like season 9 was the season to wrap things up. Especially with the CMCs, The, the Last Crusade. is one of those episodes where, oh, uh, we get to see Scooter's parents. We get to see their aunt from the comic books and whatnot. We, we get to see them close the chapter on certain characters. And... Silver, what would you have to say? Well, just because you close the story doesn't mean you do the characters a service. I mean, unfortunately, uh, dare, daring doubt, mm. or no, that wasn't. Wait, that wasn't that daring doubt. The last season, yeah, daring doubt would be season, season nine. I, I'm looking no, daring at, doubt season nine. Yeah. Oh, okay. Then, oh yeah, it was daring done, where she considered giving it up, uh, and Pinky helped out, uh. You could say Ali Zodal is is you know just misunderstood, but he did try to bring in sweltering heat and murder <laughs> ponies all over, and you know he was foiled. So clearly, like, is there a, is there a, a uh, is the environment suddenly undergoing a crisis now? Twilight, you killed the entire sector of Equestria. <laughs> just FYI. <laughs> so. I can't totally get behind that. What I really took from Daring Doubt is that Fluttershy can redeem any creature. <laughs> uh, Just give them enough, give her enough time with them. Yeah, I mean, in all honesty, for me, uh, it's from what I took of Daring Doubt or in the whole season in general is that they wanted to close the book on certain characters. That's why we got uh, rush jobs with Daring Doubt because, oh no, season's going to end. People are going to ask what happened to Daring Do and her group of friends or her group of uh, storytellers and whatnot. Okay, this is what happened to them. And <laughs> yeah, it's, sorry? it's kind of sad. Daring, Daring Do doesn't really have a circle of friends. She's like, Sherlock, I don't have friends. I have nemesis. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and Do normal people have friends? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that sounds boring. <laughs> uh, but... Uh, I interrupted you, Silva. Sorry about that. So, uh, you were saying? Just that closing the book, sometimes you're not closing it, you're slamming it, and everyone jumps when you do that. You know, in startlement. But at the same time, too, I feel like season nine is the fan service season because we got the episode where she talks to angels. Uh, she talks to angels is the episode where... Uh, Angel Bunny and Fluttershy switch bodies. And those kind of episodes are usually fan service episodes where we get to see or we get to experience what the other's thinking and, and so on. And those kind of episodes are quote-unquote fun. Like fun for the fans to experience stuff. And we get to see a mean Fluttershy. Well, quote-unquote mean. <laughs> too much attitude, too cool for this world. <laughs> Though when you when you said fan service, I was like, "Hey, talking about we didn't even get a we didn't get a beach episode." Then I thought, "Oh wait, no, we did see Celestia in in a 
bikini. <laughs> See, but no, uh, f- f- uh, fan service b- beyond uh, <laughs> bikini clad ponies. Fan service could also mean <laughs> other things. Like we get to see, uh, what you call this? Um, uh, two, four, six, great. We, we get to see uh, the characters in generally the outfit. So that's one of those things, and. There's more like what uh the Big Mac question. You get to see Big Mac get married to her darling. Uh, what was it again? Uh, man, Sugar yeah, Bell. Sugar Bell. So those kind of episodes or this kind, of, <laughs> sorry, uh, this season is the quote unquote uh, wrap up. Is also the fan service where we get to see the showrunner acknowledge certain things like marriage is a thing. Well, I mean, marriage was always a a, a thing. I mean, yeah. Kate, the cakes, Kate and Shine Armor can give me the. But no, no, it's getting to see, honestly, a culmination of the pear butter and what we saw with pear butter and bright mac. Mm-hmm. And don't sorry. So most mostly, it just highlights that the most recent seasons. I'd argue that the last five seasons really put an emphasis on continuity. Mm-hmm. True that. True that. And also, don't forget the last crusade. We get to see the parents and. The parents, uh, what you would call this, personality is wild. Who would have thought that uh, Scootaloo's dad is Steve Irwin? Crikey. And that's not even a joke. <laughs> he might have said that. I don't know if he said crikey, but yeah. I definitely think he did modeled. say crikey. E-gads. <laughs> or E-dads. See? This is just what I mean. Uh, season 9 is the season where the fans get what they want. And yet, fans often don't know what they want. Uh, That's also part of the problem. True, true. And you know what? Uh, is there anything more to add, Silver? Because we have been running long, and we've been running in quote unquote a circle. I'm good. You're good, Tara. What about you? Anything more to add? No, I'm good. All righty then. So, with season nine ending, and the the way that it ended. What are you guys' predictions for season 10? And for those who are at home who are confused and wonder, wait, there's a season 10? I thought season 9 was the end. That is true for the TV show, but season 10 will continue on in comic book form by IDW. I have no real expectations for season 10. I want to see what do the comics do? Do they, do they take advantage of the format of the comics in that you don't have to pay for voice actors and actresses? Uh, you can feature any number of characters interacting, provided you can give a good reason. How are they now f- more free that the show is done? Because now they can make a change to the status quo and it'll actually stick. Mm-hmm. All of these things may or may not come to pass. So I just say go into it with an open mind and high hopes, but it's going to be its own thing, as it should be. Mm, true that, true that. Uh, first thing for me, I I would have I I wonder if sorry I I wonder if season ten, uh, would continue on, uh, past where the show is, but still carry its own comic continuity forward. We may never know. <laughs> well, soon enough. And Tara. Well, we've first. got to we've we've got to get this darn COVID virus taken yeah, care sure of. That. Yes. Anyway, Tara, what about you? I mean. I can't really say much because I also don't know what to expect season 10. I mean, I do want to hear more, or I guess in this case, read more about Zakora because I really like Zakora and how she is. And she's not a pony or Pegasus or anything. She's a zebra. But ever since season one, I always wanted to wonder, or I always wanted to know, where'd she come from? Yeah. Like, why is she here in Ponyville when she's a zebra and she's living in the Everfree Forest? That's true. I, I always wonder... Does she have a cutie mark? And if she does, uh, how does the cutie mark look on other zebras? Like, that would... I always wonder about that. <laughs> like, you you notice how her mark looks uh, vaguely specific, like a cutie mark? Like, what do other zebras look like? I always wondered that about that. It always looked vaguely sunnish. To yeah, me. but that could be a cutie mark. So what about the others? Like, mm, so on. Uh, but still... um. Season 10 uh, comic book form would be interesting because it's the start for the comic being A-tier canon instead of B-tier. 
So now whatever goes forward is considered canon. And uh, nothing besides Hasbro's mandate could sub, uh, supersede it. So the novels would have to refer to the comic for future reference. But anywho, but anywho, um, with that, let's wrap this up. So I, I forgot to tell Silver what we're going to do next week. And you know what? I too got no idea. Probably we'll do comics and whatnot. So yeah, uh, stick around for next week's project. We got no idea. Probably we'll do a comic or another special. Who knows? So stick around. Don't we still have to look on uh, Little Witch Academia? Oh yeah, that's that's the other thing. Yes. So that's the uh, yeah Little, Little Witch is one of those things that we might be looking for. So yeah, who knows? Uh, ponies, we got no idea, but uh. After ponies, we'll do witch. So yay, that'll be cool. But anywho, um, yes. If you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at gmail dot com, and you can also reach us on the Twitter. The show's Twitter account is at the show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Silver, where can the good people find you? As ever, you can find me on Twitter and DeviantArt under MLP Silver Quill. You can find me on Kofi and Patreon under Silver Quill which will help support my videos located on the YouTube. Just do a search for Silver Quiller after the fact. Come check me out on Fridays as I do a Fulfillment Friday, uh, usually with a guest host as we chat about life, the universe, and everything. And uh, keep an eye on the on Equestria Daily on Wednesdays where I post editorials and comic reviews. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Go check it out, guys. And Tara, where can the good people find you? Well, the good people can find me on Facebook, DeviantArt, Twitter, or YouTube under the name Torterra1324, or they can just do a Google search, and I'll be on all platforms, including my Patreon page and my Ko-fi page. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Go do so, guys. And also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And stitch radio, and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyVLive.com. Links are in the show notes. If you would like to support the show, you can do so at Patreon.com slash the MBS show. With every support, you get a week's early access to the review and discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content, and a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I would like to thank you tonight. Tristan and also myself Black. Like, thank you so much guys. You are great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Cecil Fakil. And I am Tartera. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the BS show. See ya. Adios. Bye bye. So with that, season 9 has officially ended. And the show. So sad. There is an Anna and I wrong.